In 1813, the village of Utica, New York, was a small frontier settlement of 1,700 people. The Erie Canal and the railroad had yet to push beyond the East Coast, but wagon trains moved westward through town along an old Indian trade route. Growing up on the frontier was hard and exciting, but by the age of 10, James Dana had found time to accumulate a large collection of rocks and fossils. At the age of 17, James was admitted as a sophomore to what was then Yale College. Inspired by Benjamin Silliman, he excelled in geology, and upon graduation, Dana spent a year at sea teaching midshipmen. Upon his return, Dana went to work at Yale as an assistant to Professor Silliman. Since the work was part-time, Dana began working on research projects of his own. He began by studying crystals, examining their shape, measuring their angles, and working out their geometry. He also prepared a new classification system for minerals. Previous attempts to classify minerals had been based upon widely variable properties such as color. Dana's system was based on less variable properties, such as chemical composition, specific gravity, hardness, and crystal form. The system of mineralogy, published in 1837, although highly technical by today's standards, soon became popular even with laymen. Interest in Dana's system resulted in groups of men, women, and children clamoring over mine dumps on weekends. In spite of the fact that the mineral riches in the West had yet to be discovered, these amateur collectors took home specimens that would be the envy of today's rock hounds. Dana was invited to join an expedition to the South Seas, where he devoted himself to the study of corals and explored the volcanoes of Hawaii. Following his return to the United States, he published a revision of the system of mineralogy, along with a lengthy report on the findings of the expedition. As a professor at Yale University, Dana became renowned for his clear explanations and field trips. He continued to revise his system of mineralogy and published several geology textbooks, which opened new approaches to the young science. Through the years, until his death in 1895, James Dana revolutionized the science of mineralogy by developing a systematic approach to its study. His work also set the pattern for geologic thought in the United States for the next century.